What up, what up, what up, what up, world? <laughs> it's Wednesday, so you know what that means. Pop Dust presents. I'm your host, Deesa. Special shout out to Demi Grace for locking down hour number one, but it's hour number two. And my guest at this time, hey, 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 hey. shout out to the studio audience, all for you. Um, <laughs> my guest at this time is a revered Brooklyn MC veteran OG in the game. You can catch him on Sirius XM with his show, The Tour Guide. He just came off hosting the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festivals. And if I keep listing his accolades, I'm gonna run out of breath. <laughs> with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Tore. Hey. Hey. I'm here. <laughs> we don't got a serious budget, so, you know. Serious don't have a serious budget. Oh. <laughs> So how about that? Ra, 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 ra. Well, at least not for me. It's not represented in my check. Pay my man, pay my man, pay my man. But brother, thank you so much no for stopping by. Thank you for having me. So, for those of you who don't know, once again, this man has been putting in work for God knows how long. He's worked with the most accomplished figures in hip hop, DJ Premier, yes. Pete Rock, yes. Marco Polo, yes. Sky Zoo, yes. Fontaine, yes. Feral Monge. Like, yes. I, I can't the keep, homies. I can't keep naming stuff, man. Like, cause it's gonna dominate the interview. Your accolades right, are just gonna rack up, and then we're gonna be out of time. But, but we don't want that. Yeah. Cause but, we got new accolades to yeah, uh, get yeah. up to, and we got new projects to talk about. Yeah. And yeah, you know I mean, things so, on deck. So yeah. let's. So you, know you I mean? better you you better than me can describe what's going on in your life. So why don't you talk to people a little bit, give them a brief little introduction for those cool. who you made. Well, I woke up this morning. Uh-huh. I made a protein shake. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, banana. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, man. Uh, host. So Sirius XM, uh, you can also catch me on various television outlets and um, acting things as well. Uh, new music on deck. I just wrapped up a new EP. Uh, yes, very, very appropriate that you did that. All praises due is the new EP. And I am currently just kind of running around the city, you know, talking to people like yourself. Also, um, just kind of te- checking the temperature um, to see how I want to release the project. I've been running my own independent company for the past decade and, and releasing music on my own. And, you know, I just kind of want to see what I've been able to accrue in, in um, uh, you know, popularity and, and what people think may be deemed worthy of some type of uh, bigger budget. And so, you know, that's kind of where I'm at now, just kind of taking me into having conversations and seeing, you know, what if there's any uh, ideas or, or, or ways to uh, bring the brand to more people is kind of what my focus is. Awesome, awesome. Because originally I saw that the EP was stated for July 12th. Release. July 12th. I'm sorry. Look, I got to look right at the... I'm sorry. I never, like, I never push it. Well, that's not true. I have a project back before. But I really want to push a project back. If I give you a date, I want to be a man of my word. I want to live up to the numbers that I've put in, you know, various Instagram posts and right. videos and things of that nature. You can blame my lawyer mm-hmm. after sitting with my lawyer and um just kind of discussing you know what we're going to do with the project you know he was like why don't you just hold off like there's no rush to put it out let's kind of again check the temperature see what's going on out there and then decide how you want to release it and so with that said i do sincerely apologize uh but all praises do is done the music is ten thousand percent done it's just about how we're going to get it to the people now yeah because i actually wanted to ask you that because with that more so when things get pushed back is often a creative issue but the right. album's been done you streamed it yeah you know, a few people got to hear it in yes. person that's but why you, you should have showed up when yeah. i sent that invite you yeah. should have been there you would have you would got a chance to hear the album a lovely collaborator richard dean was on scene brunch cake in the <laughs> building gang 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 but this seemed more of like a business thing than it was a creative thing is yeah. that more so because of just your lawyer's advice or just from being in the industry on this side, you know, the media side, you just decided, you know what, if it's in my best interest, maybe I should hold off. Right. I just want to like kind of, so over these last few years, I've been forging and forming relationships and building rapport with, you know, uh, important people and other artists and business people and, you know, people at labels. And I was just like, it was time to kind of go through my Rolodex and start to just kind of tap into some of these relationships and see, you know, if they could be fruitful, you know, could it be mutually beneficial? Um, I know how to put a record out. I've been putting records out my whole career, my whole catalog for the most part I've put out. Um, and I and I definitely appreciate every single person that, that ever digs in, whether it's a, a single download or they buy an album or some merch or stream or whatever. I definitely had clap 
clap shit up. Uh, thank you, thank you. Rotating. I appreciate for it. no apparent reason. No, the, the reason know, is because it's hard. It's like you I'm, need that. I'm at my desk and I'm I'm cooking dope for no reason. Just in my mind. cook up. You know, you know what I'm saying? saying? And yeah. make sure you, know what I mean, post put that post it on the computer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got a three o'clock meeting, but clap at shit two, up. right at two forty though, we I'm still shit yeah, up. we still on the cook up. <laughs> my thing was again, Tori is the MC. Torre is uh, plant-based, you know, Torre is a radio host, Torre is an actor, Torre does a multitude of things, Torre is a father, a family man, you know, I got two kids, so it was like, how do we continue to showcase the overall brand, you yeah. know? And, Not only and, showcase it, but maximize right, it. Right, exactly, you know, I want to I want, I want to be in every household, you mm -hmm. know, I want to be in every computer screen, every phone, um, every inner drum, and so... Um, my reach has been my reach, you know, but if there's someone who can help us reach further, then I'm definitely willing to take those minutes, meetings and have those uh, conversations to see what we could do, you know, just to get it where it needs to be. Absolutely. And it's that type of mentality that I love hearing from artists, you know, you being more seasoned and more ingratiated in the hip hop foundation from working with the people that I've listed. but. I've always made the joke recently when it came to rappers that, you know, in order to kind of stay relevant, you need another job. So, <laughs> so you got people like, you know, you per se, you know, Rob Markman, Joe Button, who, you know, who are MCs, who are very, very great at what they do. You know, your pins can't be questioned in the least bit, but you take on this media role and you become sort of these tastemakers. Do you feel like that's sort of the key to longevity for like a lot of rappers not necessarily getting into hosting but venturing outside of just making music and fashion and things like that do you feel like if they more so contribute to the culture and become social commentators it extends their their run in the game i mean i think if you have something to say you know then there's there's a, a way for you to get it out but my whole thing you know i, I can speak for Torre only is just being able to to have multiple revenue streams for one, but also multiple outlets and platforms. You know, for me, getting into radio was like, cr coming up, I wanted to rap, so I wrote rhymes, and I went to studio and I made songs, and I was like, man, I want to hit us on the radio every day. And then the, the business started to change, and the sound started to change, and kind of what was popular started to change, and it was like, well, how do I still figure out a way to be on the air every day? And so there was an opportunity to be a on-air personality. You know, okay, dope, now we mastered that. And how do we get into the te television space? And so those hosting opportunities came along. And, you know, my, my initial plan was because my heroes, you know, Ice Cube, Pop, Will Smith, you know, Kid and Play, you know, like they, it was music, Latifah, it was music, and then acting and film. film. You know, so that was really my blueprint was like, Music, I'm going to get into that space, dominate there, and then that'll kind of springboard me into the next level of what I want to do moving forward. And so it's just about kind of sometimes you tweak your plan, you know what I'm saying, a little bit, just to make it make sense. Um, but we're still on that same path and we're still on the same road. You know, with Joe, amazing MC. You know, Joe, I remember Joe doing morning radio here in New yeah, York hot years ago. You know, he did Hot 97. Rob, I met as an MC. You know, Rob Markman, the journalist, is I, I know him as an MC. I know BK Sykes, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like, every, just understanding like, there's a multitude of ways to kind of get to where you're going. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to stay on the same path or the same road as everybody else, as long as you get, or Ludacris. You know, Ludacris, yep. Chris Lover Lover was a huge radio personality and out in Atlanta. Rapping. You know, his focus was like, yo, I want to get in the radio station just so I could get people these raps. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? My thing was like, I've been putting out these raps but how do I get an opportunity to sit with someone like 2 Chains? How do I get an opportunity to meet Migos? How do I get an opportunity to talk to just, I mean, all of the people that I've had on the show over the last four years to be able to build and form relationships being an independent or underground artist? Well, SiriusXM provided that platform, so I would be a fool not to utilize it. And to be kind of self-serving just a little bit, I feel like you and I, we're we're kind of like mirror images of each other because the same thing with me. I've been an MC for pretty much all of my life. Mm -hmm. And now I'm on this platform. Right. But has making, not necessarily transition because obviously you still make music, but delving into the media platform, has it kind of reconditioned your psyche when it came to being an artist? Do you see things differently being on the other side of the fence? Um, that's a really interesting question. <clears throat> 
I think being in the business, I've learned to see things differently. You know, as a fan growing up, just listening to the radio or watching TV, I got a whole different perception of what the music business was. So once I got in it and then I found out the real, I was like, oh, all my favorite rappers is broke. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't They're real. Insecure. That's not his girl. Yeah, this guy's got a drinking problem. You know, he don't like himself. It's just all, not you personally, but <laughs> you know, what I always try to do in my art is try to give you the real, you know, and I know that's very cliche to say, but like, I want you to understand that you don't have to sell 20 million records to sustain a lifestyle, you know what I'm saying, to be successful. Absolutely. It's all about what success is to you. Um, so for me, I, I think what I've learned more so was just, okay, that wasn't real, that was a facade, but I've dedicated so much time and energy into this craft and this field that I gotta figure out how to make it work for me. And then that was like the joy, just understanding how to run my own company how to put out records, you know, how to put together a marketing budget, you know what I'm saying, like how to balance the books, how to do this, how to make a profit on a project, reinvest in the project and still be able to pay myself. You know what I'm saying, like just things like that that I didn't necessarily get into it for, but I, I had to learn it, you know, it was like sink or swim, I had to learn it. So that was really the, 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 the parts of the business that I wasn't aware of before getting into it that I learned from. Yeah, I've always said that once you know the industry, you find out what you want from the industry. Mm -hmm. Because once you start to figure out, like you said, all of these things that you coveted so much are pretty much facades. You start to pick and choose the aspects of the industry that you want to be involved in and the aspects of the industry exactly. that you don't want to be involved exactly. in. And that ultimately helps you cultivate a plan where you can go, you know what? This isn't conducive to what I want to do. This isn't a part of the plan. I'm going to go here instead. And right. it stops being about attention and money and it more so becomes about building up a brand and speaking of a brand speaking of all praises do okay i was wondering where that segue was going all right all praises do <laughs> <laughs> tell us the meaning behind the title i mean we can all assume you know just from everything that you talk about that you're extremely grateful for everything that you right. know <laughs> you've been blessed with but is there another meaning to it no there absolutely is and it's funny um you know i definitely wake up every morning thank god various times and stops of the day i just thank you mm -hmm. you know um on those late nights when I get home and I make it, I'm like, thank you. I know that was you. It wasn't me. It was you. But um, I, I've been working with a producer by the name of Praise since 2014. He did a, a record on uh, my mixtape, Admission to Guilt, What's Love? The original place that the song with me and Farrell Monch actually um, came. And Praise and I just had amazing chemistry. When I started working on my 2016 album entitled, I reached out to Praise and I was like, you know, shoot me some joints. I'm working on an album. And man, he ended up with like four records on the album. And that was not intentional. It wasn't like, oh, if Praise is gonna get four and this one is gonna get two, or he just kept sending the, the bang, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, as I was listening back to the album and just listening to our chemistry, I was like, man, you know, I think, I think it would make sense for us to rock together. And a lot of people have been saying that. And so I kind of just alluded to it on the outro of the album. Like, yo, pray, you know, I did a, um, like a, a audio liner note on the album where I shouted out all the producers and everybody who contributed to the project. And as I was reading off and I got to praise his name, I just kind of said it, uh, yo praise, we probably need to do a whole joint together. And you know, you can't just say stuff no more. These people will hold you to it. And so, um, you know, when it's, when it's album mode, when I'm creating an album, I like to really be inspired. I like to come from a whole different space. Um, and since 2016 is entitled, I really haven't figured out what my next conversation was gonna be, but I didn't wanna keep the people who look to me for music waiting, you know, because a year and a half, two years in this business is like 75, 75 years. years, yeah, that's dog years. So um, I was like, well, let me put a project together, let me put a little EP together, and who better to produce it than Praise? And so Praise did all the beats, so all praises do. Oof. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it was. Double entendre, don't ask him how. So many people hit me like, yo, is that gospel rap? Not so many people. <laughs> Not so many people, but like three people was like, yo, are you doing gospel now? I was like, yo, that's really funny. No, but <laughs> but I love the Lord, but no, you know what I'm saying? So um, I don't want anybody to go in under the false pretense that is, you know what I mean? Lecrae boss, it's, yeah. it's just, you know, me doing what I do and, and, and still being the MC that you know me for. Uh, but it's just a play on words and, and a play on the side of what, again, for people know me for. Dope, dope, dope. So you being so multifaceted in the industry, when it comes to creating, how, how are you able to tune out all the unnecessary noise and just lock in and be 
to array the MC, not to array the personality, not to array the philanthropist. Like, how do you switch gears so abruptly when it comes to making music now? When it's, when it's music time, I do, I make like a conscious effort and decision not to listen to anything else. And I'm not really sure when that started. That wasn't always part of my process. Um, but I know over the last couple years, when I'm in album mode, I don't listen to like my peers. I'm not really paying attention to what's happening on the radio or the space around me because my ideas and thoughts and concepts are coming to me and I'm inspired to create. And so like, I'm really kind of just locked into what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, but, but balance is the key to life and also just time management, you know, because I do do a lot. Like today, if you saw my calendar today, it's kind of crazy. Um, I do do a lot and it's just about understanding, you know, it's 24 hours in a day and you got to try to max them out, especially when it's, when it's go time. Like right now it's album, I'm um, EP promo mode and things of that nature. I'm still taking meetings. So like today, cannot say I was on B, I went to BT today to play my video. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it was up there. Um, I took a meeting at a label. I took a mu meeting at a distrib distribution company. I interviewed Maya. I did my radio show and now I'm here at Pop Dust. With more than thankful, Wait, all praises do. Today. That was just today. <laughs> yeah. You know um, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, You're a busy man. Do your Googles, man. Right. <laughs> so, you know, again, it's just time management. I sit down, I look at my day, I look at the calendar and I just figure out how we can, you know what I'm saying? Like lock things in without without stretching myself too thin. But also, you know, it's a lot of points that you gotta hit. And so, you know, when it goes back to the music, like I do know how to just like zone out and, and pay attention to just what's happening in this studio. Awesome. And speaking of time management, you're plant-based. And the reason why <laughs> I, I correlate the two is because- I'm, Yeah, I need this. Please yeah, show I've, me how you- I've experimented or tried to get in the mindset of being vegan, but me being on the go as well and knowing how challenging it is to find places to eat that you know are vegan friendly, how do you do it? Um, I mean, so many places that I travel now um, definitely have options. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So like being in New York is easy. Being in LA is easy. Um, I'm in Atlanta a lot now. You know, out there is not as easy, but it's still a lot of spaces. But um, once you mentally locked in, you know, you make that conscious effort to do it, it, it just becomes second nature. Like if I'm somewhere and there's not a plant-based option on the menu, you know, then there's gotta be something, a fry, or, or I just chill, you know, or a bowl of fruit, or if there's a salad, you know, please hold the feta cheese, just things like that. Or I just know how to have, have a glass of water till it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to eat at every occasion. Um, but for the most part, you can always find, go through the menu and find something. Like your sides, usually. Yo, let me get some sautéed spinach, you know what I'm saying? A little olive oil. That's it. Keep it simple. And when did you make the decision to be plant-based? Um, I've been plant-based for the last two years. Um, it's funny because I don't know if you know, Maya is vegan. Like, yeah. she's fully vegan. vegan. So, like, her shoes was, like, fake leather. Mm -hmm. I still got a pair of J's on. So, <laughs> this is why I, Styles P, though. Styles, when I was talking to Styles about <laughs> veganism, he was like, I'm not vegan, I'm plant-based. And it's a different, you know, like, I still throw in a good leather bomber. That's mm -hmm. me. Um, but, but talking to her, I was, it was so funny how um, similar our transitions were, where it was just like, I want to challenge myself to do something else. Mm. I want to push myself to do something different. I want to be able to deny myself something that, you know what I'm saying? I, I think that uh, I, I, want to, I want to be able to tell myself no to something that I, I, I know. Because it's so easy to, maybe not for everybody, but it's, it's easy to tell someone else no than to tell yourself no. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like you are the hardest person to deny. And so when you start to just challenge yourself like, yo man, do I need to have a burger? Do I need to have this? Do I really want this? Do I, you know what I'm saying? So like for me, it was just, yo, Torrey, challenge yourself. It was easier because I had eaten beef or pork in like over a decade. Listen, that's like super easy. For right, me. so that was already off the menu yeah. forever ago. Um, I was at an event, I'll give you like the short condensed version. I was at an event, it was a listening party. It was rap music playing, it was weed smoke blowing, it was pizza, it was chicken. You know, it was a rap event. Hennessy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, usual. wow, Hennessy. The usual. I'm there, I'm listening to the album, you know, it was knocking, everything sound good. And I ate a piece of chicken and I just was really turned off. I was like, man, I don't want this. You know what I'm saying? And so from that moment, that was September 2015. From then, I decided that I wanted to go pescatarian. I was like, well, let me just mess with fish, salmon, you know what I'm saying, things of that nature. Um, and that was that that lasted from September to December. 
So once I made it through Thanksgiving and Christmas with like really no um with with no desire to want to go back, I was like, all right, well the new year's starting. I don't really do resolutions, but let's see if I can go vegetarian to start the year. You know, kind of get myself a cleanse, a good start. Go the whole month going green, boom, boom, boom. Um, January turned to February, February turned into March. And then as I was out, you know, when I was asking for different options to eat, people said, well, are you vegetarian? Are you vegan? And then I was like, well, let me do a little bit more of the knowledge on veganism and see what that is. And then around like May, June, I went vegan of 2016. And here we are today. Wow, that's a very, very <laughs> fascinating journey. <laughs> because but, it's, not e- it's not easy in the least bit. So for you to be able to do that in such a short amount of time, it was dubbed a short amount of time, and do it transitionally instead of just going from eating a plate of bacon to just like <laughs> eating nothing right the next i tell day. people no pun intended don't go cold go don't go cold turkey mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like for me it was very transitional slow gradual um also once i became vegan and i started doing the knowledge because like now it's like okay well I'm, I'm i'm having this plant-based diet i still need to figure out how to get my nutrients i still need to figure out how to you know maintain my shot my size and also um i just want to learn more about it so i started reading some things, and I got the uh, Russell Simmons, the Happy Vegan book. And then once I read that, I was like, oh, you know, because it talks about not only, you know, the the the, um, the damage that it does to your body, you know what I'm saying, but it also talks about the the environmental portion of, you know, what the, the meat and food industry has. And then it also talks about just the karma of, you know, like eating an animal and their flesh. You know, I don't want to get into it. I want to turn it, the viewers off. But it just kind of <laughs> just talked. It talked to different. It talked to different aspects of why you know having a plant based diet you know made sense. And once we have the information, you can't like unknow it. And so yeah, definitely, definitely. And I know you're vegan, but let's get to the meat of the conversation. <laughs> He's here every Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. Been working on these all day. <laughs> but yeah. Hip hop, do these new niggas suck or what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so no, talk about it. <laughs> so being not just an MC, but being from Brooklyn and then coming up in a time where lyrics and bars matter, but also being on the other side of the fence, as we like to call it, do you find it conflicting sometimes when you see something in the culture now where you want to just give your unfiltered and unbiased reaction, but you gotta go, damn, Torre, like you gotta chill. The bag is in place. See? Right, right, How right. often do you have those moments? <laughs> I try not to compromise who I am at all. There are some times where I might see something, I really want to speak on it, but I rail back um, because I am associated with certain brands. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously um, those those checks matter. You yeah. know, like I'm not going to sell my soul for a, 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 a check. But if I can refrain from saying something that might damage your relationship, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, with that said, if there's something I feel wholeheartedly about, then by all means, I don't care who I'm in business with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to say what's on my heart and what's on my mind. So, you know, there, 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 there are points at some time, sometimes in the conversation where I'm like, maybe dial it back a step. Uh, and yeah, that's that's it. It's, it. It was it was difficult to get to that place though, mm. because I'm really passionate about what I believe in. And again, like if it's something I'm super passionate about, then it doesn't matter what. But you know, like I'll see an artist say things like, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't blow up because I'm dark skinned and I'm like, "Man, stop! Yeah. You ain't blow up because you're douchey." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and people genuinely don't dig that about you. You know what I'm saying? And you also not super nice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like. And like two chains and Wayne and Rose and all these other guys are darker complected and they have no problem exactly. being successful, right? So stop the shit. Yeah, definitely. And I just feel like when you know, once again, we both grew up in hip hop. Like mm-hmm. you know, my dad was a DJ, my uncle was an MC. Like Word. I went to park jams, Word. like you know, all that stuff. So it wasn't so much just music for us; it was a way of life. Culture, yeah, right. culture, culture, definitely. culture. <laughs> but now, you know, that's, you know, it's funny that you say that, not necessarily referencing Amigos, but just that term gets thrown around so loosely these days. And it's right. almost like a cop out when it comes to certain things, like people are doing it, quote unquote, for the culture. Mm-hmm. How do you feel, you know, seeing, you know, not just from a musical aspect, but when it comes to social media, when it comes to the temperament of people who listen to hip hop, how does that play into 
your mindset when it comes to not just the musical aspect but the generational aspect of hip hop? You know, like being able to pick up your phone and see everybody's innermost thoughts at any given time is is definitely something new. For me, you know, I I, I walk it like I talk it. If we're gonna reference me, goes again, <laughs> like. When I'm rhyming and I say something ill, I don't stop and be like, yo, did you hear that? Like in the middle of the song. I just keep going like. Like, yo, I said that. Right, I hate. I I, had to go Rambo to turn my wrist rocky. Right, but I didn't stop that. that. I didn't stop and say, one time for Sylvester Stallone. Like, if you (laughs) caught it, you caught it, and it was for you. Mm -hmm. If you didn't catch it, maybe at some point in your life. You will catch it. You'll turn on the TV, and it'll just snap. And you're like, yo. But. My whole thing is like I don't I don't need to talk about it. Mm. I need to be about it. I need to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I do it. I'm I'm a I'm a, a living breathing representation of the culture. So I don't need to stop and make reference to yo this is for the culture and this other like I am the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like things that I do in my community is because that's the culture to me. You know what I'm saying? The music that I choose to make with the people I choose to record with is the culture like I don't have to stop and wave a flag and hashtag it and make a banner like I I, I am it you know what I'm saying like and those who who see it and, and get it and appreciate it and it resonates them within them then it's for them and and people who don't maybe you'll catch you next time around Brooklyn boy done good <laughs> a so, little bit I try to do I right. so you also have a podcast yes with your daughter yes which I find very very interesting you see the excitement in my face yes <laughs> tell us about that whole experience because I can imagine her being under you know a wealth of knowledge like yourself and somebody who's in the industry she some of that definitely rubs off and you can tell <laughs> in your interactions in the podcast but how did the concept come to be and what's it been like being able to create something with your daughter i mean it's the most fun i've had creatively in a while it's also something new that i've never done before um or that i really have seen done in this space taylor and i is my daughter she's 16. we have the most amazing conversations i drive her to school i pick her up you know in the house we talk about this and that and obviously as a 16 year old female she has a different point of view than her dad does um, we like different music, you know, we like different fashion things and different artists and, you know, but also in the Venn diagram, there's a place where we do meet and we have a lot of the same interests and likes. And it just makes for amazing conversation. We would always talk about things in the house and have these really, really dope conversations. Um, rest in peace to my buddy Combat Jack. <clears throat> I was talking to him some years back about kind of moving into the podcast space and he's somebody I would go to to, to just kind of just just talk just have a real talk and talk about business and life and family and fashion and anything else under the sun and when we were discussing me moving into the podcast space it was like just figure out what your conversation is going to be you know and um right before he passed we got a chance to talk and I was like yo I think I got it it's going to be Taylor and I and we're going to do this daddy daughter boom 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 and he was like yo that's it I love it it's brilliant let's do it um, obviously, you know, um, his time came, you know, to no longer be with us and very, very sad and, and, and unfortunate. Um, but, but for a number of reasons, I wanted to make sure that it came to fruition. Obviously, just having a conversation um, with my daughter and giving her an opportunity to have a platform and, and get her voice out there and kind of start her own thoughts and, and, and endeavors and forays into the industry. Also, the daddy daughter dynamic you know um i think that a lot of people need to see that and obviously just to kind of keep my word to combat to make it happen you know with so many different reasons why i needed to make it happen and so we just decided to do it and it's like the most fun we on like episode five i've been traveling a little bit so shout to everybody who's been waiting and asking but um i really enjoy it she enjoys it um, we get a chance to hear from people, like to really get that real time feedback, and it's it's really dope, man. I, I love it. It's the Family Matters podcast with Torrey and Taylor. And I think it's so amazing that you're doing something like this, not only from an innovational standpoint, but more so because you're not like most black men who are parents, where they try to hinder their daughter's voice and you know keep them <laughs> locked up in a tower. And it's more so do what I tell you to do you're giving her a platform at such a young age to express her thoughts and you know even towards you you right Right, right, right. there's something that she disagrees with you're inclined to promote it as opposed to shutting it down I think that's a very very 
refreshing idea towards not just creating content, but parenting as well. One reason why I think it really works is because she's very like strong-willed and she's a very forward thinker, you know what I'm saying? Like she went vegetarian in the household before I did, you know what I'm saying? She has since quit. But she, she was putting me on to so many different things. Like I learned, as much as she learns from me, you know, I definitely still learn from her as well. Um, and it's dope just kind of where we are in our ages that we both can still, you know, like we'll go to concerts together. We go shopping together. We go, and I have a son too, he's 10. Um, and, and just being able to have these interactions with them. But then you get to that point where it's like, oh wow, now we can have like real dialogue, real conversations. Like you have an understanding of politics you know what i'm saying like you have an opinion on these things you understand music and culture you have an opinion on these things as do i mm. my opinion is going to vary from yours is going to differ because we're looking at it from two different spaces this is great to share to share with the world mm. and again you know um to just kind of start the entrepreneurial bug in her you know like we can do this you can do this if you really enjoy having conversations and, and being in this space, you know, you can figure out a way to monetize this and this can turn into a career option for you. Or you can say, all right, I'm going off to college, that's it, we never do it again, but I want to be able to open every door and every opportunity to my kids because I didn't have anybody show me the way I had to get here, but now that I'm here, the generations after me will have it that much simpler. See this, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> this is what a good brother is. Good brother, good man, got a good, good job. Good beige soul brother. <laughs> so, back to hip hop. Back okay. to hip hop. I'm gonna ask you, uh -oh. and then I'm gonna give my okay. biggest hip hop hot take that you have. My biggest hip hop hot take. Um. Wow. You wanna go first? Give me a minute to think about it. I'm gonna I'm go first. Okay. This is more of like, you know, a more recent thing that I've been seeing. Okay. But I think I'm probably one of like very, very few people who don't want a Kendrick and Cole collaboration album. You, there are two people here who don't want that. Really? Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I would love Woo! to know. I would, well, I'd love to know why though. Okay, so to start off, like, you know, of course, you know, I'm the type of person, like, if I say something quote-unquote negative, I got to offer something positive. Mm -hmm. So, me, I would much rather see a TDE Dreamville collaborative album. Mm. Like, you know, we get, you know, Boss and we get, you know, Absol on the track, you know, something like that. I feel like that will be much more, you know, conducive to, you know, the hip-hop culture than a Kendrick and Cole album. But I just feel like, from, like, a basketball standpoint, like, I don't... I don't want to see Bird and, and Magic play together. Mm. I feel like they're better playing against each, each other, other and having their own entities. And like every so often, yeah, they may, you know, do a right. McDonald's the commercial. Dream team. Right, yeah, right, you know, right. something together, like that. Right. But I just feel like that's just something that isn't necessarily needed. It may be, it's more wanted than it is needed. Because once again, everybody's saying, yo, for the culture, right. this is needed. But I just feel like they're, they're similar artists in some aspects, but they're different artists. And I just feel like, Sometimes two great things are good on their own as opposed to being two great things that come together. That's, that's very interesting. I, I don't really feel that they're similar in that, in that aspect. Um, like, I think maybe some of the content and subject matter they talk about may, you know, uh, dabble in the same space, but sonically, tone-wise, um, creatively i think they do it so different you know what yeah. i'm saying like and I, I hate when people just try to force things together or like y'all gotta do this today like uh, nah that's whack to me yeah. so yeah i don't you know I, I i i appreciate both of them individually uh if they put the project together and it was dope i would enjoy it if they put a project together and it wasn't dope you know that would be it but i don't think that that has to happen yeah. i don't think that's something that has to happen all right my hip-hop Hot take. Oh, leave Cardi B and Offset alone. <laughs> leave oh. them alone, man. Let them live their life. So many people have so many things to say. And I think that when you are a public figure to a degree, you know, your life is publicized and things that you do are publicized. But, you know, whoever's on the other side of that phone typing those comments, they're like, man, turn that phone around and look at yourself before you judge everything about everybody else. You know, like, I, I love the fact that Cardi was able to come up 
you know, from virtually out of nowhere yeah. and and change her life and change the lives of those around her. Like that's that's and just a in good an organic way. Yo, that's just a good win. Yeah. That's just a good come on win. Whether you love all of the content or you know dig how she did or what like respect the overall storyline like that's a win like she did that on her own that was organic she built her following up by being herself by being transparent you know that turned into a music career well it turned into a reality television career short and then into a music career and who knows where she's going to take it from there um offset having other kids and things of that nature like man your mother got four kids by uh, four different dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that was a personal attack. It is. Nah, nah. My mother got around. three kids by three different. I love you, mom. So right. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, man. Like, yo, chill. Like, man. Let people live. Yeah. Let people live. And also, you know, let people grow and learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody is so focused on attacking your right now that they won't give you an opportunity to grow and blossom into where you're going. You know what I'm saying? Like, because everything is so in the moment. Yo, you did this today. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to tear you down and you can never live it down. Or, so Chris Brown just had this concert here in Brooklyn, right? Mm. And then let me be the first to say, domestic violence is garbage. If you put your hands on a woman other than a caressive face or touch her butt, you trash. <laughs> With that being said, if you've learned from that and you trying to do things to move in a better direction and, and better yourself and like you got to let people grow past their mistakes, you know, although it may happen in the public eye, if they're not showing signs of doing that, that behavior and it feels like they've learned and moved on from it, like you can't continue to hold that over somebody's head. You know, he had a dope show sold out or whatever in Brooklyn. And I just want to see him be able to grow and get better you know and i'm not saying that he is i'm just saying that i haven't heard about him smacking anybody up anything like that and so if he has moved past that in his life then let's move past it yeah. r kelly on the other hand still got chicks trapped in the not me in the vent so he's still trash to I, me no, man. i actually I don't think you could ever come back from that yeah. from chris brown kelly. oh no that's what i'm saying like I mean, but he's he's been doing it for 20 years so like where there's smoke the building is burning down at this point if there was one isolated r kelly incident in 94 and people were still talking about it now i'll be like fam let it go but like every day it's like where's my kids like you know what i believe i could fly it's taking on a whole different meaning now. <laughs> it doesn't sound as refreshing as it did at nah, graduation man what flies he talking about <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. So, before you get out of here, you know, I have to ask once again. I'm trying not to nerd out so much, but once again, Brooklyn, when it comes to hip hop, you guys are, you know, and this may get my Bronx car revoked. It's number one. You understand what it is. This may get my Bronx car revoked. Right. Thank you for starting it out in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, <laughs> thank you like Brooklyn, for taking it to the highest heights of ever. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, as far as, you know, you guys' impact and, you know, legacy in hip-hop, where do you feel like it will, it will continue to grow? Because you have guys like yourself. You have guys like... Joel Ortiz, who I'm a huge fan of, and I'm surprised that you guys haven't done a drink together yet. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Joel, what's up? We yeah. always see each other and talk about it, and then, like, but that's some Brooklyn shit, too, though. You know what I'm saying? We be on our Brooklyn shit. Hey, yo, Yawa. Make sure y'all at the man. Yeah, but, we, I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to make that happen. You guys just seem to, like, always be able to just have, whether it be your Jay-Z's at the very, very top, just, like, controlling the game, or guys like you, Joel, just being able to consistently deliver you know, and then the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival just happened, you know, and shout out to Ralph McDonald, by the way, Video Music Box is definitely responsible for raising me. Thank you very That's much. That's a fact. That's a fact. But you have all these things that, you know, make up hip hop and is in large part to, you know, the contributions of so many guys like yourself. Where do you feel like ultimately when it's all said and done, Brooklyn's name will be when it comes to the, not just the ascension of hip hop, but the stabilization of hip hop? I mean, you know, as we see right now, what Jay Z is doing has obviously never been done before. Never um, been done. Him still being relevant so many years later, him, you know, being able to put artists in the position and him moving into different business endeavors and things like that, you know, um, it's just, it's, it's unprecedented, of course. 
but also who would have thought you know what i'm saying like and i think that that's gonna that's gonna change the the conversation and the dynamic of how you can age in hip hop and things that you can that you can accomplish being of hip hop, um, and it just so happens he's from Brooklyn. If you ain't know, you know, um, <laughs> if, you, if, it, if it escaped your memory, right? You he's know, from Brooklyn. two of the arguably the best MCs ever, Jay Z and 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 Hove, I mean, Hove and Bi, yeah. um, both from Brooklyn. You know, um, you look at like. Audio two top billing milk and how that drum from from top billing is still being used, you know, to this day. That's not. I give it a seven. I give it seven out of ten. Um, you look at you look at guys like you said, like Joe Ortiz. You look at Joey Badass. You know, you look yeah. at you look at um, Kwali. You look Most. at even up to Casanova and some of the newer guys. You know, like Brooklyn is still very much present and relevant um and and you know it's gonna go down in history like again the bronx is where it was created and we are forever indebted to the bronx but you know if you if you would go go through every borough and you know i think queens might have the most rappers but brooklyn has the most impactful rappers you don't hear no debate from me once again yeah, it's same. coming from a bronx native so I hope you don't still live in the Bronx. I don't know how you're going to go I'm in Brooklyn. Okay. (laughs) Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in in, in Brooklyn. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm in Brooklyn. And so I'm pretty sure you may have been asked this question once or twice, but I just got to get it out on the air just so, you know, I feel better about myself. Are you related to Matt Hoffa? (laughs) Shout to Hoffa. No, we're not related. We just both. Yeah, you know I mean, do a hundred push-ups. Yeah, you know I mean, a set, and we not around a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Shout out to my guy, Math, though. But I definitely appreciate you for stopping by, Thank man. You. Let the people know what else you got coming up next outside of All Praises. Do any shows, any appearances, so they can follow you and be a part of the movement. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the best way to get in contact and just stay up to date is on my social media at Torre on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, visit the website, it's Torre.com, I T S T O R A E.com. As far as appearances, I'll be in North Carolina this weekend for the Fleet DJs conference on Saturday. So check me there. Um, definitely continue to make sure you pay your Netflix subscription. You know what I mean? Auditions is out there. So, you know, we're waiting on some of those days to come through. And I'm shooting some visuals. Like I said, I, I was up at BT earlier giving them a sneak peek of one of the visuals off of All Praises Do. Um, and the merchandise, you know, the merch I'm really excited about because, again, there's so many different things you can do with that saying, that phrase, the prayer hands. It's like, so we've been creating a bunch of really, really dope merch that whether you're a Torre fan or not, I think you'll see it and be like, oh, that's just a dope shirt. I want to support that. Um, growing the brand, building the brand, obviously still Sirius XM, Revolt, BT, uh, Pop Dust. Yeah, hey. we out here. Definitely. Once again... All that stuff. Follow him. Check out his music. All praises do. But don't like follow me if you see me outside because I might steal on you. Just be like, yo, tour was good. I, I mean, yeah. I, like, I respect what you do. Like, but like, if I see you for like four blocks, don't I might get steal it confused. On you. Just because I don't eat beef doesn't mean I don't want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? I gotta say, Jason Arturo Stroud uh, says Brooklyn and like five explanation points. Cause <laughs> That's how you gotta say it's it though. True. It's a fact. It's true. It's, it's a fact. That, that's how it's spelled. That's how it's spelled. <laughs> they leave the exclamation points off because of, you know, frenetic spelling or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, but we know it's but Brooklyn. It's Brooklyn. All praises do. But thanks again, guys, for tuning in for this week's episode of Pop Dust Presents. Once again, shout out to Demi Grace. Shout out to Torre. I go by Decent. Shout out to Dan Victor. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace.